Yeah, at all. So today is 79 years since D-Day. I saw a good um, comment on YouTube a while ago about D-Day. Stands for Devil's Day. And talking of numerology, so obvious, sixth hour, sixth day, sixth month, 1944. Obviously, one out of nine is ten, four out of four is eight, ten out of eight is eighteen. That's again three sixes. So, like Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage. And again, it kind of shows you this most of the world's events are all scripted. If I, if I remember correctly, the Allied forces were delayed for a day. They, they claimed it was about the weather, but other sources will say otherwise. More to do with just a big satanic. Uh, bloodbath ritual really of all these young men, young European men killing each other and to paint a picture if you imagine uh, whether it be D-Day or whether it be Arnhem both in 1944 um, if you could have shown them men when they were stood in the door you know waiting to jump out of that plane in Arnhem you know like a big projection uh, of Britain today and the western world I mean where do you want to start? Uh, the Islamification of Britain, you know, the fact we're going to be a minority, you know, British people who've, who've now been turned into white British people, because uh, there's always all, all this Marxist demographic change, and given his classifications, it's all division at the end of the day, but it's all about trashing British culture and getting rid of us, and you know, the, the grooming gangs, every TV advert promoting miscegenation. How often do you really see like a, an all-white family these days? You know, like the 90s adverts, it was every single one pretty much. Now, since 2020, you know, that was um, when that event happened, everything really unleashed itself. And uh, moving on, you've got London. It's obviously ruled by, you know, Pakistani Muslim. Same for Scotland, ruled by Pakistani Muslim. Britain's ruled by Indians. Um, you know, you've got Rishi Sunak in charge. 2022, uh, you've got Pretty Patel who's just left, and now it's Braverman or whatever her name is, you know, they're in charge of immigration. Um, you know, I remember my granddad who fought in World War Two. there was a story about him, he's a strong Labour man, you know, because he was a tough working class bloke from Sheffield, and he said he'd never vote again when there was an Indian councillor standing for Derby, and uh, you imagine what you think nowadays, with them basically ruling the country. Um, the African security guards, you know, like, like a little private army bullying us around. Uh, it's quite ironic, people always talk about that, you know, had we lost the war, we'd all be speaking German, and we'd all be, like, ruled under a tyranny of Germans. <sighs> well, where do you start with that? You walk down any high street in England, or Britain, and it's just a big babble of foreign languages. You know, again, if you know, there's some schools like my, one of my relatives, one of my young relatives, She's the only British girl in the entire school. So you're going on about utter nonsense, as most people do around this time of year, about the armed forces. Um, moving forward to, you know, like kids being groomed on TV with that naked education. Um, you know, like that's that is progression, progressive towards what these people want, um, which is like a brave new world with no moral code whatsoever, you know. Um, and obviously, something that's extremely telling, in the sixth month, obviously six being a devil's number, you've got Gay Pride. You have a Gay Pride month, Gay Pride marches. So, 79 years on from landing on the shores of Normandy, you've got Gay Pride marches. Is this really what them, them guys fought for? Can any? I don't think anyone could possibly tell me that's what they fought for. Even a crazy blue hair liberal type couldn't possibly tell me that. Um, what else have we got? So the the most obvious argument people always come back with, and I've seen it first hand, you know, the, the the media build up a good campaign around them around these days, you know, get the veterans on the beach crying and and uh, the, the the people watching it obviously get emotionally involved and rightly so, and they'll start saying, oh, they fought for me freedom. I mean, come on, the last three years and everything we've been through the the restrictions on our lives that were imposed um, from social distancing to lockdowns to when you go online nowadays and you try and post something in retaliation to to the liberal mob and it's it's banned now because of hate speech laws like demolition man you know of hit, uh, word regulation 
and uh, so we already are in a tyranny. It's um, it's like the Soviet Union had gulags, where if you go went to oppose the communist regime, you just get shot into a gulag and work to death. We're in a different gulag now. So if you you have to earn money to survive, and if you go against the narrative, you get kicked out of your job because of all the uh, liberal policies are in place. So it's like a intelligent financial gulag that we're in now. Um, but yeah, so just imagine that scenario, and uh, you know, I'd, you could just imagine if I had the ability, like on the internet, I put them guys that famous photo where they're all landing on the beach, and just put a big rain, six stripe rainbow flag, gay pride march, Islamification, the African takeover of Britain, all across like the beaches of Normandy. <laughs> it's just like that's what we fought for, and. Uh, I've heard a very different narrative to World War Two, and that's the one I believe in, and it makes sense to me, that the Germans were actually fighting against all of this. There was The Germans were living in something similar to what we're living in now, and that's what they're fighting against. They knew how dangerous the communist regime in the East was. And there's actually a video footage of um, Ukrainians celebrating as the Germans came through and started pushing the Russian. well, they weren't Russians, they are Bolsheviks, and I uh, can't really go too much into that because I'll get kicked off. And... Uh, but yeah, if anyone hasn't seen it, go on to the internet and type in The Greatest Story Never Told by Dennis Wise. It got taken off YouTube. It was around about eight years ago. That told me, it told me everything I needed to know. It made much more sense that we've been told a total pack of lies like we normally are. I worked out at about the age of 14, 15 that I'd been lied to about World War Two because the school I went to was um, with a lot of Pakistanis and Indians. And I, I just remember looking like, so if we were the good guys, I sat there in history thinking, if we were the good guys, why are all these, why are all these uh, Asians living in Britain now? It doesn't make sense. Um, and that was back then, let alone now. It's not racist or racism at all. Like, well, what, what did we fight for? Did we fight for all these people to come here? The, the, the project began for, within three years of um, the end of World War II in 1948 with the Windrush generation. And it's just accelerated every single year because it's a deliberate policy to get rid of um, British people and replace us. And it's accelerated now because of that procedure that happened in 2021, which is slowly taking its toll. I'm seeing it around, around Derby. Massive families of Africans just turning up out of nowhere. Um, and they're obviously new arrivals. And... Uh, but again, if anyone wants to go on about racist or anything like that, it's not at all. It's just, what did those lads really fight for? It's absolutely shocking what's been done over the last 80 years. Yeah, I'm sure when I fin uh, finish this, I'll think of all this stuff, but um, that'll do. Cheers.